Hey everybody. So, <laughs> jackets, of course, on top in Ireland. Uh, I know it, you know it, the whole freaking world knows it and saw it and beheld the jackets freaking taking those uh, Seminoles down there. And it has been the talk of the town, right, uh, for the entire weekend because, well, it was the only game to watch besides SMU or something. Uh, newest ACC team, which some for some reason struggle with Nevada, okay, is a million-point favorite. Uh, but we don't need to talk about that. Uh, what really everybody cared about was this game, baby. The Jackets taking down Florida State in a thriller in Ireland, right? Um, <clears throat> I wanted to go ahead and get my final thoughts out on Florida State and kind of look forward to next week because that's what we should be doing, okay? And we'll get into that. Um, I guess I'll start out by talking a little bit about FSU. A lot of discourse <laughs> about FSU and how they're not as good as uh, everybody thought they were. And, yeah, I did not expect FSU to take that big of a step back, to be honest. Um, a lot of people are saying, well, they still have everything in front of them. Yada, 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 yada. Uh, yes, okay. You know, 12-team playoffs, very forgiving, which is one thing that's actually bad about that. I'm not a fan of the 12-team playoff, but that's another freaking video. But uh, thanks to that, of course, FSU, you know, still has everything in front of them. And even for the ACC, you know, if things go their way, they could find their way in the title hunt. They're going to have to not play like that, though. If they freaking <laughs> come out with that type of performance, um, you know, every week, they're going to be in for a rough time. It, it's almost like FSU wasn't hungry, and they thought that they could just roll their helmets out on the field and steamroll us, one of those type of deals. I think, honestly, we surprised them. I think they were shocked um, that, you know, like – Obviously, they didn't think that we were going to be any good. And anybody who's paying attention to Georgia Tech isn't surprised. Well, am I elated and overjoyed? And was I nervous during the game that we would lose? Yeah. Am I surprised we won? No. I said into the game. We In, in any, se any game this season, we have a chance of winning any of the games this season. Okay? Um, so, no, I'm not surprised that we beat FSU. I'm overjoyed but I was saying all off season we take a step forward they take a step back boom recipe for an upset and it happened uh, much to the freaking um, pleasure of sea dog I quite enjoyed myself on the rec talk stream if anybody was wondering where I was if they missed it um, I was streaming with my buddy rec talk and we had a good freaking time and we are undefeated streaming together, so hell yeah to that. And uh, we had a great time. And, yeah, FSU, uh, they've been getting picked on a lot, and pretty much deservedly. Their fan base has been crying a lot lately, wanting to, you know, well, there's the playoff situation last year. I def Look, I defended them tooth and nail last year. I defended them. I thought they should have been in the playoffs. I thought they got screwed. Most of the college football fans don't think that way. Um, so, obviously, it makes it worse for them. They got blown out in the bowl against Georgia. Um, you know, most of their team transferred out for that game. And, obviously, they're <laughs> they weren't there this game. They're a completely different team. And a lot of the Florida State fans, you know, had it in their mind that they were going to be just reloading like Bama or something. Well, clearly, that's not the case. Clearly, they're taking a big step back this year. Um Florida State, uh, you know, so I don't hold against them the playoff thing. I would be pissed about that, too. I'd be screaming from the hilltops about it, too. You would hate me, too, if that happened to the Yellow Jackets, right? But, uh, and a lot of people did. I was I was mad for them a lot. What I, my beef with Florida State is the whole getting out of the conference thing. Hey, I'm the freaking, I'm an ACC guy. I enjoy this conference, and my team's here. And in conference realignment, Georgia Tech's future would be uncertain if the ACC were to collapse. So I'm freaking scared uh, of the, about these jokers leaving the conference and leaving us hanging out to dry. You know what I mean? Um, and 
I freaking am pissed off about that, okay? That's my bone to pick with them. I, I'd appreciate it if they didn't try to ruin the freaking conference and, and, and you know, and leave and sue everybody and freaking... That, that's what my problem with Florida State is. Not to mention all the cocky Florida State fans, man. Some of those some of those fans coming into this game were so confident. They were like, oh, oh we're pissed off. We're going to come out. Here's the thing. I saw a tweet, okay, before the game saying, oh, we're so pissed off from last year. We're so pissed off from everything, you know, going on around the program. We're going to come out Knowles by 100. Listen, man, your entire team last year is gone. Nobody on this team last year cares about what happened last year, dude. It's all new players. You lost, like, a ton of production, okay? You put together a bunch of people from the transfer portal, and sometimes that works. This time it looks like it didn't, or at least you're having a slow start, right? And you ran into a team that's had some, you know, consistency and continuity because Brent Key's going into it. Well, this is a second full year. He had an interim year. Um, so, you know, two and a half years Brent Key's been here, and and we have continuity, and we have a team that's got – that gels together. You have a bunch of transfers that came in that don't, you know – and it's so clear in hindsight, you know. I, I It's so clear in hindsight what the situation is between these two teams. And, you know, you have Georgia Tech – who's a real team, you have freaking Florida State entirely composed of transfers. And and in hindsight, it's very clear to see why the what happened freaking happened, right? Um, <laughs> and, but, you know, I, I'll be the first to say, I didn't think Florida State was going to be that bad. I picked them to win. I didn't think they'd take that big of a setback. Now, it could be that Georgia Tech is good. I think we are good. I do. And I'll get into my renewed expectations, but I don't think that we're some kind of, like, playoff team, right? A lot of people are getting carried away with that. Haven't had football in nine months, right? So, of course, the first thing you see, you're going, oh, my God, hey, Georgia Tech, they go to the playoffs. Okay, pump the brakes on that. I think I think my situation of what I described of Florida State is taking a step back, we take a step forward. We're both probably – middle of the road to, you know, uh, upper echelon of ACC teams. Both, the both of us are. We're a little bit higher than them, though. <laughs> um, so that's enough about freaking, I mean, Florida State. Like, we, you know, the game itself, uh, Georgia Tech controlled it. The better team won. It wasn't a fluke or anything. Like, you know, they might have more talent. Okay, I, I, I keep hearing this, like, Oh, Florida State's far and away the more talented. Uh, I can't tell, man. I don't. I don't think so, man. They recruit really well, but it's not like they're Alabama or something. Okay, they don't have. You know, they. I mean, they were in the dumpster for however long, and and then had a bunch of players leave. They're they're not far and away more talented than Tech, and we freaking. I, of course, I'll get into our valuations, but we recruit pretty well. Okay, we recruit pretty freaking well. Right? And clearly, along the lines of scrimmage, we won the battle. We won the battle in the trenches. So, a lot of the times, you see these teams that are far and away the more talented team will own the trenches. Well, Georgia Tech did. So, no, I don't think Florida State is far and away the more talented team. I disagree with that. I've heard a lot of people say that. And I don't think, I, I think Georgia Tech's roster is sneaky good. Okay, sneaky good. Our talent, our 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 recruiting staff is I don't say this lightly elite at talent evaluation. We don't make we we okay. We just are kind of started getting you know the big splash um, four star and recently five star uh, uh, freaking recruits right. We came into we we landed our freaking second ever five star with Josh Petty. Uh, in school history just recently, and we have, like, four four-stars. So that's a little bit um, more, right? We have a top – we have, like, a top 20 class in the country right now, a uh, recruiting class. So that's a little more than normal, but this k- the key staff is freaking 
incredible at evaluation. We had three true freshmen starting last year and uh, a true freshman All-American and a couple and, and the other two were like uh, freshmen all ACC. Uh, so you know we yeah, yeah our freaking evaluation's incredible. Look no further than and and then the, this year the trend continues right. We needed help on defense big time. Taj Butler come out there true freshman dude and he was out there flying around making tackles tackles for loss even. Uh, so so yeah our evaluation's freaking great our recruiting's great and people just don't realize that, right? We're gonna be hanging with the freaking Jamies and Joes. Uh, of the upper tier teams before long, right? Uh, we're not as far behind as as people think, and uh, and it showed, right? It showed. We pushed them around in the trenches in the game. We controlled the game uh, for the most part. Uh, Florida State's lucky they have that kicker. That kicker made some freaking insane kicks, right? Uh, a couple fifty plus yarders uh, to keep them in the game, you know. And they had to do some, uh, you know, clutch fourth downs or whatever to plays to freaking score on their last drive. We didn't really do any of that. We kind of did what we wanted to uh, on offense and, and held them uh, decently. Or, you know, we did decent on offense. Uh, defensively, we, we shut them down quite a bit, quite a bit. Uh, DJU is, is – yeah, I had a lot of people getting on to me about my take about DJU, and I don't think I freaking forgot about you, Florida State fans, okay? I said that GJU was a bridge quarterback from Jordan Travis to this crumbin' hookin' hook freaking quarterback, five-star that they got coming in, right? DJU is a bridge quarterback. He's not going to be your guy that takes you to the playoffs or does whatever aspirations you might have, Right. And I got freaking roasted for that. Well, where are you people now? Where are you people now defending DJU now? He's a freaking... Everybody's laughing at him now. Bridge quarterback was a little generous. He might get benched before the end of the season. Okay? The freaking... <laughs> my good friend on Twitter, Touchdown Timothy, called him the checkdown merchant. <laughs> the checkdown merchant. He couldn't complete a pass. Over 15 yards, dude. He checked down the whole game. Of course, he was under a lot of pressure. But your receiver's not as good as you think you are. And DJ, definitely not as good as you freaking think you are. You're running back. You're offensive line. We freaking had our way with them. Okay? Besides that, I've heard, I heard this insane stat these um, uh, rec talk was talking about, dude. Uh their first drive, right? First play, first drive of the college football season, and obviously we're you know getting our feet under us. They go for seventy something yards, uh, uh, put up seventy something yards rushing. They rush for thirty eight yards for outside of that drive for the rest of the game. Thirty eight yards in 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 freaking fifty minutes of football. Thirty eight yards. It's pathetic. A team who's far and away that more talented, to my point earlier, is not going to only put up, okay, 38 freaking yards. It just doesn't happen, dude. They got this freaking hot shot from Alabama. Well, these these supposedly amazing players you brought in were nowhere to be found. And, and maybe they get gelled along the way, right, along the season. But this game... Uh, Georgia Tech controlled. I mean, we. I mean, we win that game seven out of ten times at least. We win that game seven. Out, we were the better team. We're better than Florida State. And say what you want about freaking odds. Don't even get me started on Vegas, dude. I mean, if we played again tomorrow, they'd be favored again. Doesn't make much sense to me. We win that game seven out of times. Why did you favor them? Why are we only freaking – why is our over under four and a half? Can someone explain that to me? Four and a half, dude. Three more to go. <laughs> or I guess four more to go. We'll freaking hit our over. Or one down. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Georgia Tech a little bit. 
that's what I got to say about Florida State. Um, world's not ending, although they probably think it is. But you guys have have your freaking time in the sun. It's time for the Yellow Jackets to step up and see what we can do with our season. Uh, because the sky's the limit with us, right? We have everything in front of us. So I want to talk a little bit about, I guess, some good things. Um, Jamal Haynes, total beast. Um, who wouldn't be, though, behind the offensive line? A uh, shining star of our offense. The offensive line. And don't forget the tight ends, right? Tight ends mostly blocked. We don't have, you know, a prolific passing tight end situation at Georgia Tech uh, because, you know, we ran the triple option for so long. We had to build that position group from nothing. They'll freaking – they'll show up every now and then, catch a couple passes, but most part, Key has been using them to freaking block, and they do a great job. Don't think I didn't notice Jackson Hall's. Y'all look up Halls, dude. He had freaking this insane uh, uh, clip where he, he – two plays in a row, he's like pancaking dudes and gets, you know, a huge gain. Uh, shout out to him, to Halls. It's his first year playing for us, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, so, uh, offensive line, far and away the best position group on the team. Uh, best in the ACC or at least top two. Uh, Miami fans have something to freaking say about offensive line. Apparently, they're going to have an offensive line that's really, really good. We'll see about that. We come out there and put on a clinic. So, Miami, when you're playing this week, I'm going to be observing very closely your freaking offensive line, okay? And if you don't, and if you don't rush for uh, however many, we freaking ran all over them, dude. Wide open lanes. If you don't do that. I'm claiming the title as the freaking best offensive line. And you know what? I can go ahead and claim it. Best offensive line in the ACC because uh, you don't have any proof to say otherwise. Uh, and possibly best, you know, one of the best in the country. Like, at least top ten. Like, our offensive line is, is incredible. It's the first position group that Brent Key took over and turned around, and I love it. And and that's where exactly where you should start. We're landing big-time offensive recruits. Um, you know, the first hire he made was Jeep Wade. He's killing it, and I just love it. I love it. Um, and, and the rest of the position groups will follow. A quarterback, a good quarterback is going to want to play behind an offensive line that good. A good running back is going to want to run in between those gaps. And good receivers are going to want to play for the good quarterback. So it will all follow. It's going to be great. I have full confidence in our freaking offensive line. And tight ends, love those guys. Um, I love freaking Hawes. And uh, Avery Boyd, uh, of course, we had Brett Seether go down, unfortunately, with a season-ending injury uh, before the game started. Uh, they moved Avery Boyd to tight end, which I was, I've been thinking, like, he needs to be he needs to be a tight end, okay? Our receiver room's pretty deep, and Boyd wasn't seeing a ton of touches, and he's just a big, tall guy. He, he I think he's great at um, freaking – tight end and um i agree with that move and he did catch a pass a first down pass i think it was the only time we saw him today but i'm looking forward to see what they got um speaking of that we'll we'll stay on offense here one person i haven't mentioned have you picked up on it is our quarterback haynes king uh so speaking of passing a uh, very very conservative from uh, a passing point of view. And it reminds me, okay, of our identity that we wound up having last season. It, so last season, dude, to start the year, we were, we were, we had so much variety. Like Haynes King could throw it, pass it, RPO, read, uh, pull it and run. Uh, I mean, just, just anything he wanted to do, he could do it. Uh, he was doing to Louisville. He was doing to Wake Forest. He was doing at Ole Miss even. Uh, it, it was the first four games that he was really killing it. Started turning the ball over a bunch, starting with Bowling Green. Then towards the end of the year, okay, we moved away from having him do so many passes, and, and, and we got more conservative. We got more run heavy, and it worked because our offensive line is so good. Um, so that – identity has carried over from what it looks like and we take the occasional shot 
I remember um, one instance where Eric Singleton was open. Unfortunately, Haynes King overthrows him uh, and misses a touchdown pass. Uh, that one hurts a little bit. It seems like early la- early in you know the season last year, he would have made that freaking catch. And, um, and, and so it did suck to see that a little bit. I was kind of looking forward to seeing, like, if Haynes King – could maybe fix that turnover issue because we were saying he was putting up insane stats last year, man. He had like three thousand something yards. He was he had t- so many passing touchdowns. He was going crazy, and and the issue was that he had so many freaking turnovers. We were saying, okay, well, can he turn? Well, can he cut the turnovers in half? Well, he didn't turn it over at all. <laughs> he didn't turn it over at all this game because they never freaking throw it. We had. We had, you know, a couple dink and dunk freaking short throws, easy completions, and, like, two downfield shots. Um, And I get it. Like, you don't want to come out and turn the ball over. Dude, if we turn the ball over in that game, we might have lost. It was a freaking field goal game. Uh, It was a tight freaking game. Uh, I don't blame uh, leaning on what we can do. I hope to see – I hope to see – more uh, uh, us open up the passing game a little bit here against Georgia State. Don't I'll get I'll get to Georgia State, but uh, I'd like to see you know I'd like to see us maybe stretch the field a little bit more. Uh, can he do that? Do we have no confidence in that? That seems like you know, it takes away a dimension from our offense, and uh, you know that that is still a concern for me. Uh, he got the Haynes King. Uh, okay. I'm not. I'm not freaking. I love Haynes King. He's my freaking hero, right? I got this. Look, your new favorite freaking shirt is here. Sea Dog, from Section 103. I haven't even opened it yet. I should have worn it this past game. Look at it. Shout out Section 103, baby. Haynes King, Tech Light. I adore Haynes King. I adore Haynes King. I'm just being realistic about you know what. Um, his, his his progression as a quarterback. I want to see him be able to, to pass. Like he did in the first four games. I know he can do it. I know he can do it. And I know we're scared of freaking throwing the interceptions. It, it, that's what that's the vibe I got. We were being very conservative. Could be that we didn't want to freaking open it up in the first game. We knew, you know, uh, the running game was working. So why take the chance and throw it? I totally get that. Plus it was raining in Ireland. Um, and, you know. Just bad things can happen. So, I'd like to see against what, what we have uh, Georgia State next week. I'd like to see us uh, see what we can do passing against them, uh, assuming that it's not going to be a very close game, right? God Almighty! So, <laughs> that's what I think about Haynes King. Uh, what I did like, of course, his his reads were great, his pulls, and he freaking took off and made something happen and moved the chains. Move the chains, Haynes. He freaking did that, right? He did that um, several times, and just the Haynes King we know and love. I love that he can just, you know, when we're clut, we need it in a clutch moment. He'll freaking take off and get the uh, and get and get the first when when uh, the chips are down. So I love that about Haynes King. Uh, freaking, that's my quarterback right there. Love to see what he can do. Um, uh, passing wise, I, I I really hope that you know, I really hope that uh, he's able to pass when we need it. There will be a point when we need it. Let's talk about defense a little bit too. Uh, obviously, I think the defense performed better than the offense this game, dude. They were playing nasty, man. Like I said, we held them to 38 rushing yards outside of that first drive. F- freaking unbelievable, dude. Unbelievable. <laughs> They just could not run. It just did not work. They tried so hard to keep running. They didn't abandon the run because DJ, you can't freaking throw like I mentioned earlier. They didn't abandon it. The defense just would not allow them to. Every time they tried it, it didn't work. We were all over them, dude. All over them. We were getting a good pass rush, uh, got a sack, and we, you know, only one sack this game, but DJ was under pressure all game. Um, so that, you know. That was great. Love to see that. Our pass rush was non-existent last year. You know, we were getting stood up and, and ah, 
ah, quarterback had, you know, the quarterbacks we played all last year had all freaking day to to pass, okay? And that was annoying, right? It was bad, and it needed to be fixed, and they freaking fixed it. Damn. Santucci, man. What a beast coming here and turn this thing around. Uh, and, and now that we have a decent pass rush, our 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 secondary can shine, right? Um, the freaking pass coverage was great. Amari Harvey, dude. Amari Harvey was killing it, dude. He shined. I thought our safeties looked great. Um, you know, Lamiles Brooks. Big fan of Lamiles Brooks. I am. Uh, Kyle De- Eford. How could I not mention him, dude? He looks like the. You know, he looks like just uh, the most linebacker, linebacker you've ever seen, right? With the neck roll. He was good last year, and he has developed in the offseason. And he is uh, he is a shining star on our defense, dude. He was everywhere, man. I love watching him play. I love it. Uh, Taj Butler, I mentioned him earlier. Uh, evaluation, there it is again, dude. True freshman starting in the first game, getting tackles for loss and getting meaningful reps. Love to see it. Um, Romello Height is as advertised. He was uh, he was in their backfield a, a ton that game. Had a freaking face mask that was freaking, you know, let them get a first down and, and score a touchdown. Without that, they, you know, we would have beat them freaking by another score. But <laughs> it is what it is. I like Romello Height. Um, and I was just so freaking impressed with the defense. Uh, they did great. Now, the D-line, I, I think – I noticed towards the end of the game, um, the pass rush it did it did peter a bit. The run the run uh, defense it was it was great all game, but um, I noticed they weren't you know I feel like they were gassed towards the end of the game. They weren't getting as much pressure on DJU, just as I suspected. suspected. We had like eleven transfers out on the D line last year, and we just have no depth. We have a good starting lineup of guys and are going to struggle with depth. So I think at the end of the games, you're going to see that crop up a lot. And that's not good. Um, but that's the only really thing negative I have to say about the defense. I mean, they freaking play lights out. I love them. I love it. They were freaking all over them, dude. And <laughs> and it would have been even better if they didn't have uh, the Harrison Butker Jr. at kicker. You know what I mean? They got freaking two field goals off of that crap, fifty plus yarders. But no, dude, uh, defense is night and day. I don't even recognize them. So, huge shout out to them. All right, let's look forward now to the, you know, that game. Of course, incredible, loved it, uh, just what I wanted to see. Uh, let's look forward to the rest of the season now, right? Um, new expectations for the season. I had us at seven wins uh, in my season prediction, and I had us losing this game. And, well, this gives us a big head start. This gives us a great head start on the season uh, on, on that record. I have full confidence we'll make a bowl. Uh, my, my floor and ceiling for the team in the preseason was five and seven, or five, five and seven minimum eight and four ceiling. Um, But based on that team I saw, uh, that team's not winning only five games, okay? Uh, We'll make a bowl for sure. I say we win a minimum of seven games. I'm thinking seven, eight, nine wins right now. A lot of people are going crazy talking about playoffs and stuff. Look, okay, that's a little carried away, all right? Obviously, the playoff field is much bigger now. Um, But... I, you know, I'm focused more on ACC right now, and a lot of people are saying, oh, well, Georgia Tech, you know, not freaking ACC contenders either. Um, And that's another thing. The odds have, like, so many teams. They have, like, Stanford ahead of us, SMU. We are so underrated when it comes to odds makers, and it just doesn't make any sense. Like, um, people keep making money off of Vegas, and Vegas just will not adjust to Georgia Tech winning. We beat the over last year. We freaking covered a bunch. And we, you know, this year, like, obviously we're off to a great start. We're clearly going to win more than four and a half games. Like, come on. 
So I don't, I, you know, I don't get what the deal with Vegas is, what they're seeing with us. They say Vegas is never wrong, but I mean, they're wrong a lot about us. So you tell me, how freaking smart are they? What their freaking statistics? Sounds like they need to update them and quit fading us and freaking put some respect on our players because clearly we're we're better than they think. I mean, who might have questioned freaking Vegas? They're million bajillionaires. But, dude, if you're betting on tech lately, you're freaking rich. So, I don't know what the deal with that is. <laughs> what was I saying? Something about seven, eight wins? Yeah, ACC. Everybody is ahead of us in the ACC rankings, and people are taking it. Okay, Some a lot of people are talking about, you know, could we perhaps compete for the ACC? Here's the thing. Uh... You may not know it. You may not notice this, but Georgia Tech has been in the running for the ACC the past, not one, but two years. The past two years, we've been in, like, the top four in the ACC, at, you know, towards the end of the season. We finished fourth last year, and our record doesn't indicate it. You wouldn't think so from our record, but, yeah, dude, end of the season, we were already in the thick of it. Of course we can compete to get in the ACC championship. Winning, it's a different story. But of course we can. We have the past two years. If we can do it the past two years, of course we can do it this year. You kidding me? We can beat the top teams in the ACC. We've been doing that. 5-0 and versus ranked ACC teams. 5-0 and Brent Key is undefeated against ranked ACC teams. It's the freaking crappy teams that we always lose to. We always lose to the crappy teams that we should beat. This team... If we're mentally there, which we weren't last year, we weren't mentally capable of beating the teams that we should. If we are mentally capable of, of beating, of handling business against what teams we should beat, yes, we can absolutely compete for the ACC. Looks like there will be some top competition, but, dude, get, knocking off Florida State game one is a huge head start for that. So I don't want to hear anybody say we can't compete. Uh, of course we can. We have been, right? Um, <laughs> I feel like the general population would say, okay, take it, you know, competing for the ACC too far. I just don't think they realize that we've been in the thick of it the past couple of years. So that's what I have to say about that. And <laughs> speaking to my point of being mentally capable of taking on the lesser teams. Georgia State this week. We absolutely need to lock in. Forget this game. I, I I hope the players know this by now. I would hope that last year was a harsh lesson for them. It's got to be. It has to be. It's mostly the same players. It has to be in their minds. Right? Surely. Right? We go on the road last year, beat an undefeated Wake Forest team, Come back home the next week, lose to Bowling Green. It's a similar situation to this now. Uh, we go on the road, beat Miami, and undefeated Miami in insane fashion. Come back, lose to Boston College. Are we going to do that again, or have we learned our lessons? Brent Key's learned it. I know he's going to be preaching that this year. He said it on the field. He said, okay, time, this was a business trip. Time to go back, put this out of our minds, and get to work on the next game. And we have to freaking do that. We don't have the luxury of looking forward, you know, looking over at people. We can win any game on our schedule. We can also lose any game on our schedule. And absolutely do not need to be freaking taking this lightly, okay? I talked about wanting Haynes King to open up the passing. That's if we're, you know, we come out, handle business, do what we're supposed to, and, you know, get a comfortable lead and, and, you know, okay. Then I'd like to see him spread it around, right? I don't I, I don't want us taking Georgia State lightly. It is absolutely critical that we lock in and take care of business against Georgia State. I'll be, of course, previewing that game upcoming soon. But I've been freaking going on long enough. I've done a pretty long video here. And, uh... I think uh, that's enough for now. I'll be previewing the freaking Georgia State game next week. Thank you guys for watching. Freaking go Jackets, and uh, I will see you all next time.